last time I preached to all of you on a Sunday was 12 weeks ago. Wow, it's right. Isn't that something? Who would have thought that under such circumstances the family of God would have pulled together, maintained, and come back strong? Who would think other than our Heavenly Father? Well, we are so excited to have you with us today, and we are still excited to have uh, a number of family and friends who are joining us on the internet. Would you do me a favor? Let's welcome them today. God bless you guys. Those of you who are still at home, we love you, we're praying for you, and we want to see you soon. Well, it is no secret to all of us that we are living in a great time of crisis in our nation. Storms, corona, quarantine, political chaos, all of these things mark the days in which we live. But in the past few weeks, we've witnessed something even more devastating that has re-erupted in our nation. And it is always the job, remember this, it is always the calling and job of spiritual leaders to speak to cultural crisis. You must understand that. A couple of weeks ago, we saw a video that was kept under wraps for months of a father and son in South Georgia who began to follow a young man down the road that they thought was up to no good. It happened to be a young black American by the name of Ahmaud Aubrey. And we witnessed them take their version of law and justice into their own hands and senselessly and needlessly end this young man's life without provocation. And the worst part of it is this. If that video had not surfaced, would we have ever known this atrocity took place? These two men had no authority, no right, and no justifiable reason for this, this senseless act that cost this young man his life. On the heels of this tragedy, our nation watched in horror as we viewed the video of George Floyd struggling for his last breath. Now hear me clearly up front today. I am a strong supporter of the incredible men and women of law enforcement across this country. I do believe the vast majority of the men and women who wear blue do their jobs the right way. I believe they protect and I believe they serve. And we cannot lump all police officers into the basket with those who do evil. But in the case we saw rise up, we see a person that doesn't deserve to wear the shield. We see someone who arrogantly and unsympathetically cut off the air supply to another human being for over eight minutes. People say, well, you don't know what happened before this happened. And that's true. None of us know everything that took place, but Nothing that could have taken place could have justified such an act. Understand that. It is the job of a police officer to neutralize a threat and subdue a suspect if they feel this person is a suspect. It is not their job, once they have been subdued, once they are in custody, to cut off their air supply. It just isn't. Police brutality, racism, these tragedies speak to both in our nation. And it, is, it gives us a small glimpse into a systemic problem that we're facing. It's kind of like the dust that settles into a room. You don't really notice it until you shine the light on it. And these two cases represent the worst in our nation. We are better than this as a people. Or are we? That is my question. 
we each have to examine our own hearts and make sure that the dust of racism and bigotry does not exist within any of us. We must examine ourselves and make sure that that ugliness has been wiped away. These two incidents sparked honest protests that sought to raise a voice in defense of racial equality and the value of all human life, as well it should. Because for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing, and it's time to do something. I stand with the families of George and Ahmad and with all of those who have been oppressed. And I pray for a better day when men are not judged by the color of their skin, but rather by the content of their character. There is genuine pain in the African American community that others cannot pretend to understand. Matter of fact, it's just demeaning when you try to. It just patronizes when you try to for hundreds of years understand that for hundreds of years they have endured the pain of seeing their family members brutalized merchandised and senselessly killed and although i believe we are a better people than that today this generational pain has been passed on from generation to generation and understand that in the 20th century, up through the 1960s, there were things taking place all over that exacerbated that pain over and over and over again. And some of the events that we have witnessed in isolated cases today was taking place on a daily basis just last century. Think about that. And so a new generation of people were introduced to that pain. Now in the 21st century, we see remnants of an ugliness that has marred the beauty of a God-fearing nation. And the pain continues. I'll tell you, as a white man, I have never endured the sting of real prejudice. I've never known what it's like to be afraid simply because of the color of my skin. Understand that the only reference I have to the pain of the African American community is that which I have witnessed, that which I have seen. Today, as the family of God, we must stand with all of our brothers and sisters and call for real change and equality for all people, for all people are created in the image of God, and through the common fatherhood of God, we are all brothers and we are all sisters. Sadly, the legitimate cry for real change from all of those who have suffered has been drowned out in the past couple of weeks by things like rioting, looting, and violence in our streets. And it's not legitimate protesters causing the havoc. It is professional protesters, thieves, evildoers, and anarchist groups like Antifa. They have hijacked the pain of an oppressed people for their own personal and political gain. Now hear me. Understand that riots that spread so quickly across the major American cities cannot do so naturally. They take real organization and more than adequate funding. These groups seek to destroy our democracy and the freedom of our way of life. And the very cause they say they are trying to bring attention to is the very one they are drowning out because the narrative has switched from the cause to the chaos. Understand that. There are billionaire funders, political groups, and media outlets that are working with synchronicity to misinform, misdirect, and mislead the American people. 
the same people that forced us to stay in our homes telling us that we were going to infect our grandparents if we did not have called for thousands of people to come into the streets and protest. There is a mixed message being sent. Where did Corona go? Now the call is to abolish and defund the police. How well is that going to go when they disarm you and take away your police force and somebody breaks into your home in the middle of the night? It is ludicrous. It is absolutely ludicrous. And by the way, where's the outrage for David Dorn? 77-year-old African-American grandfather. <laughs> Hear me. Retired police officer. Shot by looters. His life matters too. And there ought to be an outcry in this nation for David Dorn and everybody like him. It's time that we realize what's really happening. There is evil afoot in our nation and in the earth. And today it is time for the body of Christ to awaken to the reality of the culture we are in. We are not on a playground any longer. Did you hear me? We are not on a playground any longer. We are on the battlefield. And it's time that we awaken and understand what's going on around us. The spirit of darkness is covering the earth and the first thing we have to do is to see the real enemy the provocateur is Satan understand that if we're not careful we will make enemies out of the people that Jesus left the church here to reach with his love and his message Satan is behind it all. He is the one that is behind all the evil in the world. He's behind every broken home. He's behind every theft. He's behind every murder. And he is behind all of the evil that men do in this hour today. The scripture tells us, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Notice that there is a cooperation between spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms and rulers in the earth. I want you to see that. Satan works through human instrumentation. Just like God does. Satan's imps, his lieutenants, if you will, on the field, and physical influencers in this world work together. Yes, there are people working under the influence of Satan in the earth, behind the scenes. But Satan himself is at the helm, and he is our real enemy. It is not a war between right and left. It is not a war between black and white. It is a battle between good and evil, and we need to wake up to the real war that we are in. It is a spiritual war. The provocateur is Satan, and the problem is sin. Sin is the hook in the heart that the enemy uses against man. It was through his first deception that he led man to sin. And when he did, that sin gave him a foothold of control in the life of humanity. Understand that. Satan's hook in our heart is sin. And he uses that hook to cause us to do his bidding. Wow. Benjamin Watson so eloquently stated a few years ago, we don't have a skin problem in America. We have a sin problem in America. Mm. And when the power of sin, Satan's hook in our heart, is broken, the spell is lifted, and we will no longer live to do his bidding. Watch what Romans 6 says. 
We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. When we truly believe upon the Son of God and we are willing to identify with the cross of Calvary, hear me, the hold that Satan has on us is broken and we are no longer slaves to sin. We are free. And that means we are free to love our brother. What does the world need? The world needs the only cure for sin that there is, and his name is Jesus. And those of us listening to this word today, we have a vital role to play in the world receiving Jesus. Well, you're not going to win this battle by arguing. You're not going to win this battle by trying to reason. See, people are trying to reason with other people without addressing the real pain that exists. Let me give you an example. If, if I have been in a car accident and my bone is kind of crinkled up in three or four different places, it's not time for you to come to me and try to convince me of your way of thinking. You need to address my pain first. You hear me? Until we address the pain in the African-American community, until we address the pain in the heart of man, we're not going to win this intellectually. We've got to deal with what is real. Once we're willing to deal and to heal what is real, then we can sit down and we can reason together and we can come up with the ways that we can get along and ways that we can make the world a better place. But right now, we've got to deal with the pain and the stuff that we're dealing with and the only way we can do that is to identify the real enemy and then make the commitment to be the real church. Church is no longer about us coming to get our religious fix to help us deal with our own stuff in life. Matter of fact, it's never been about that. Jesus didn't leave the church here to medicate ourselves with some faith to get us through our life. He left the church here to heal the world. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? He left the church here to make a difference in the lives of people who are broken and hurting. He left us here on a mission. And for those of you that church is a social thing for, you're going to be disappointed going forward because this is not a social club where we come together and self-medicate. This is a gathering room for the army of God that is ready to go forth in the earth and bring Jesus to every broken heart. This is who we are. This is what we do. This is what Jesus intended. We don't get our marching orders from the media. And the government is not our God. Those who cooperate with evil do not dictate to us our responsibility. We are living in a world covered with the darkness of evil and sin. And we already have our marching orders from our commander-in-chief, whose name is Jesus. And it is time to let his light shine. As long as I'm in the world, he said, I am the light of the world. Then he looks at those same people and said, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. It is truly time for us to become authentic believers in Jesus Christ. We need to quit trying to fit in and start being okay with standing out. I think that bears repeating. We need to quit struggling to fit in with a culture that is anti-Christ. And we need to get comfortable with standing out. Because light stands out in the darkness. 
we have let the darkness of the world dominate the light of the world. But Jesus made us the light of the world so that it may dominate the darkness. And understand, if you are going to be a light in the darkness, you're going to be different than some of your neighbors. If you're truly going to be a light in the darkness, you're not going to do things the way everyone else does them. If you're truly going to be a light, you're going to have to learn to be like Jesus. Can I get a witness from somebody? And Jesus was unlike most people he was around. But he was such an example of what man should be that people literally left their livelihoods to follow him every single day as he walked through the earth. We are called to let his light shine. It is time that we demonstrate that the power of sin has been broken in us. Too many of God's people have the hook in their heart. They've allowed Satan to creep into their lives and bring sin in. And therefore, that sin becomes the hook that he tugs on to get us to do his bidding. And if we're not careful, we'll respond to things going on around us in the flesh. If we're not careful, we'll respond like the Smith in us or the Jones in us responds rather than like the Jesus in us responds. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? We've got to make sure the hook's out of the heart and begin to demonstrate what it's like to live a life where the power of sin has been broken and we are no longer slaves. But we can walk in the righteousness of God in this life because the righteousness of God is in us through Jesus Christ. It's time to represent what it's like to be delivered and free from the rest of the stuff that's plaguing the world. Are you hearing me today? Jesus did not shed his blood so that the body of Christ could be bound by what everyone else is bound with. He shed his blood so somebody could get free, and when that somebody gets free, they can go and help set other people free. Are you following me today? You can't be a city set on a hill and be hidden. You have to be willing to stand out and let his light shine. But there's one thing else that goes with a shining light. And that is you've got to let his love show. Hear me. The acts of violence and hatred, bigotry and ignorance have spoken loudly. It's time that love speaks louder. I said it's time that love speaks louder. It's time that we overcome hate with love. It's time to realize the words of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who said we must learn to live as brothers or we will perish together as fools. God gave that man great insight as a spiritual leader to speak to his cultural times, and God is wanting to raise... We don't need our direction from godless politicians. We need our direction from anointed men and women of God who have the heart and mind of God and the will to stand up and speak out on what's happening. There are people under the influence of evil that sit back and delight in everything going on right now. The chaos and unrest in our nation, some people are just tickled pink with because they think through causing chaos, they can bring false solutions to the table. Understand something. From the days of George H.W. Bush, The first time I heard the name or the words New World Order came from his mouth. It's been going on through the president since then. There is a move going on in the earth to unify currency, therefore unifying power, and that is nothing but building the throne for the Antichrist. Somebody's got to be the anti to the Antichrist, and that anti to the Antichrist is the church of the living God. We are here for a reason. And those people who delight in the evil and chaos are not of God. Because God's love is different. Let's read what it says. It does not rejoice about injustice. 
but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. The evil and injustice in our world breaks the heart of the Father. And it should break ours too, because love calls for more. It's time that we're part of the solution and not part of the problem. It's time to come together as the family of God and model real love. It's time to love our neighbors, our white neighbor, our black neighbor, our brown neighbor. Just keep putting color on it. I don't care. Because on this third rock from the sun on which we all live, we are all neighbors. It is a small world after all. With over 7 billion people on this planet, we better learn to love our neighbor. And the church must lead the way in love. It's time to even love those who call themselves our enemies. It's time to love one another as Jesus loves us. It's time for us to resolve with Dr. King to stick with love because hate is too big a burden to bear. What is the answer for the crisis? The beginning of that answer is to identify the real enemy and not make enemies out of flesh and blood. Realize there's a devil behind it all. And the second part of the answer is for us to be willing to be the real church and let his light shine through us and let his love flow through us so that we can set the example to the world of what it's like to love one another. This world does not have to be so dark as long as you're in it. Wow. I challenge each of us today to let his light shine and let his love show. Let's start by checking our own hearts. Let's see if there's any of that dust in us. That dust that's covering the world, that's driving the madness. Let's make sure it's not in our heart. And if it's there, let's readily repent and receive God's grace. Let's readily confess it and let God wash us clean. Wow. Let's stand for the oppressed. Let's pray for peace. Let's embrace our brothers and sisters of all races with the love of Jesus. And let's determine to be the difference the world needs committing to spreading the gospel of Jesus to every heart. I want us to pray together, and Pastor Blake is coming to lead us in a time of communion. But I want us to pray honestly today. God, if there's any of that darkness in me, if there's any of that dust in my life, if I tend to judge people simply because of the color of their skin and have certain opinions about them, God, wash me clean of that. Uh, God, if I'm getting involved in the ugliness of the political division in this nation, God, wash me from that. Let's look to God for leadership and let's be examples of that same God in this earth. Bow your heads with me. Father, as a shepherd, I am so, so happy to be back in the presence of sheep. That camera lens has been lonely, God, and that's not the way you intended for church to be. You intended for us to gather together as a flock and draw strength from one another. Today, Lord, as your flock gathers, the world is in chaos and things are turning upside down. We call on the God of heaven. We call on you, Lord, to first come and wash our hearts. 
Wash our minds. Make us clean. Make us like you. Let your righteousness invade our lives. Let the holiness of God be manifest in our thoughts, words, and deeds. God, help us to be examples of a light and examples of your love. God, let us be who we are supposed to be so that everyone who wants to know Jesus can know Jesus. God, heal the racial divides in this world. God, heal the hearts of the oppressed. Those who are in pain today, Jesus, I pray that you would genuinely reach down and and just wrap them in your arms and let them know that you love them and that you have people in the earth that are standing with them. And God, for all of those who seek to do evil in this country, I pray that you would put down the evil that men do. I pray that you would stop it at its point of origin. And I pray that the God of heaven would once again be the God of this nation because you are Lord over all. And I declare through you we will rise together and the light of Jesus will shine and the love of Jesus will be shared and people will be healed people will be saved people will come together through the common fatherhood of God and the love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross we pray this prayer in Jesus mighty name and everyone said hallelujah is there anybody that feels like praising Jesus in this place. Come on. Is there anybody that feels like praising Jesus in this place? Wait a minute. You've held it in too long. Is there anybody who feels like praising Jesus in this place? 